May I have your votes? This is very difficult for me, so. C'est très difficile pour moi. Okay. Très bien. Oh, I'm a little bit nervous. Je suis un peu stressée. I know you are nervous too. Je sais que vous aussi vous l'êtes. This is very important for you. C'est très important pour vous feel. aussi. Je le sens. You are all of you great. Oh, I feel hot. J'ai chaud. <laughs> Come to Spain, everybody. Venez en Espagne. Venez chez nous. <laughs> okay. Très bien. Ten points goes to because I love his. I love. Adoré, adoré sa proposition. Hello and welcome to the EuroWhat, episode number 36 for the week of January 28th, 2019. I'm Mike McComb, and I'm joined today by Ben Smith. Hey, Ben. Hey, Mike. We are a couple of Americans trying to make sense of the Eurovision Song Contest, and this week we'll be talking about our favorite topic, logistics. There's so many logistics happening this week. I'm so excited. There's so much structure to the contest now. Like, my spreadsheets are all happy. Like, th this, this nerd is very, very happy. The spreadsheets are in order. The calendar is in order. Bring it on. Europe. Yes, the big item that happened today was the semifinal allocation. So we now know which countries will be performing in the first semifinal on Tuesday, May 14th, the second semifinal on Thursday, May 16th, and then the grand final. Well, we know that there are six countries that are uh, performing. So we know it. who's yeah, in the grand yeah. final. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one thing that surprised me today is that this was a geolocked video. That was really annoying. I mean, to be fair, last year's video was also geolocked. But also, this is essentially the like a, a global pulling of Powerball numbers. Right. And last year, it was it was inconvenient until like going to RTP's uh, Portugal's broadcaster, and they were streaming it on their website like as a normal stream. All of the broadcasters were just referring to the YouTube video. So it was just like, oh, everybody is pointing to the same geo-blocked source. H having to watch the allocation over Twitter was just really not fun. I, I was really annoyed by that. So, <laughs> But we did see how that list played out. And I think it's a really interesting split. Like, there's only so much tea leave reading that you can do with these sort of allocations. Yeah, like once things are drawn, you can only kind of do so much extrapolation, especially because we only have a handful of entries in the pool. Right. And two of those are from big five countries. So like they're going to the final anyways. Exactly. It doesn't even well, they, they'll they, we'll see like a clip of them from rehearsal, but that's about it. They're not they're not in the game yet. Right. So what we can see is like which countries didn't qualify last year and do they have a slightly better chance this year? Yeah. The, yeah. The answer is kind of. Probably. Yeah, so each semifinal has uh, eight countries that did not qualify from last year's contest. So just by the powers of math, at least one of them will end up qualifying this year because 10 countries are going to be going through. There's not a clear breakdown of like alliances or... I was trying to look through this and see if I could notice any, oh, those are, those are interesting combos. But no, like it's... It's pretty standard stuff at this point. Yeah, I mean, Cyprus and Greece are both in the first semifinal. Yeah, yeah th those two are those two are together in the in the first semifinal. Uh, Norway and Sweden are together in the second semifinal. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, like the former Soviet states are pretty split up. The former uh, Yugoslav states are pretty much split up. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's a pretty like. What do you know? A random draw resulted in a random distribution. How do, <laughs> how do you like that? How about that? Uh, also, on the logistics front, uh, we now know who the hosts will be for this year's contest. And they decided to go with four hosts again. Four hosts is too many. Last year, I feel like the main takeaway was, wow, that's a lot of people who are not performers on stage. It might make a difference this year just because they're going to have the main stage area and then the separate green room 
facility, wherever that is. So it'll keep it from people having to run back and forth from different venues. Right, but... yeah. You you have two people on stage. You have one person in the green room, and you have one person on the courtesy shuttle that gets contestants between the main venue and the green room. There you go. Yeah, so the hosts this year are going to be uh, Bar Rafaeli. Uh, she is a supermodel who was on the cover of the 2009 Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue. Yeah, no, I, I recognize that name. And it's just like, wow, that's weird for a Eurovision host. Yeah. Erez Tal, he is a presenter who hosted Israel's version of Big Brother. And Asi Azar, who also hosted Big Brother. Uh, Big Brother seems to be coming up a lot in this year's <laughs> Eurovision stuff. A lot of alumni for some reason. It just seems weird. Trend alert. Former Big Brother hosts or current Big Brother hosts. Uh, they're here and they're hosting, threatening to enter the competition. Eurovision will become the next season of Big Brother. New new concept. SESR also hosts the Israeli version of Rising Star. So it kind of makes sense that he would also be hosting Eurovision. And then Lucy Ayub, she is a songwriter and uh, she was the one who presented the points for Israel in last year contest in case they need more help in the green room they also have a mentalist who's going to be part of the festivities yeah and when you put that in the notes i thought that you were joking because we have joked over the years about how oh man four hosts is here what's next 17 and a and a birthday clown mm-hmm. leor suchard he's appeared on a handful of talk shows in the u.s over the years he was on people's list of sexiest men alive in 2010 so there's that. So the, yeah, that that's a that's a fact. Could could even be a fun fact, but it's definitely a fact. But don't worry, they have covered hosting. They have covered hosting with so many people. You will not be not hosted. So uh <laughs> we will not walk away from the Israeli Eurovision going, "Oh man, shame about all the hosts." Actually, we might, but the last logistics thing that isn't directly Eurovision related uh, is just kind of a follow up on the whole renaming of the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia. Greece's parliament approved the name change to North Macedonia. So that will be happening at some point. Not, I'm not sure what the official start date is of the new country name, but at least according to Eurovision, it's still FYR Macedonia, but that might have been because they didn't have enough time to do a like a rush print job for all of the tickets that are used for the uh, allocation draw. So uh, that may change for this year's contest, or this may just be the last contest where it's FYR Macedonia. Yep, they printed all those promotional coasters and they couldn't do anything about it. Mm-hmm. We will miss you, FYR Macedonia, even though you're not going anywhere you're just just changing your name so the other major thing that came out this weekend as we kind of ratchet up another notch on the the this hill of the roller coaster that is all of the oncoming uh national finals is that we had a couple of selections this weekend mm-hmm. the main one of course being france france has done destination eurovision the last couple weekends uh and now uh with all of the semi-finalists chosen uh they have the final eight it brings me such delight that i I have now figured out how to correctly pronounce the name of their entry. I don't know about you, Mike. Oh, yes. Uh. <laughs> but like the second that we realize it's just sort of like a, a wonderfully uh, Waluigi is hua. Uh, yeah, hua. <laughs> hua. <laughs> hua has won. Bilal has won. I don't know how you felt about the selection because when we were comparing uh, lists o- online over how we had ranked things, we were we had very differing opinions, but I think they picked the right entry. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm. it was not my favorite entry as you probably saw on my list or if, if you were uh, watching our uh, tweet stream i had opinions mm-hmm. i'm not surprised that this one won i'm surprised by how it was pretty much won by the public vote yeah like that was like a shock and like if you were not watching the jury results came in and like the jury was seriously all over the place there was no real constant we had multiple entries getting 12 points across the board it really didn't feel like there was like one particular winner like there was almost a chance it could have been like a five-way tie coming out of the jury i think yeah absolutely like there there were definitely a couple points i think when italy was giving their scores and they were midway through i think it was an international jury of 10 uh and it was like oh they could give out their points in a way where most of the acts are going to end up having like 32 points and i was kind of hoping for that just like ooh, make this a real horse race it felt like a real horse race because you had like three or four entries that were all just sort of jockeying to be on top until the next country's results came in 
there was one thing that I did notice where the acts, oh, yeah. Yeah, where the acts <laughs> that featured artists who were people of color tended to be toward the bottom of the scoreboard. And that's what happened last year, too. And it's not a good look, France. No, it's not, it's not at all. And like, and that was a jury as well. So not a good look for a lot of people. Yeah, France, France, what are you doing, baby? Yeah, uh, yeah. Also, like, it didn't help that uh, I really liked Asat's final performance and was really rooting for her toward the end. And just like, why well, yeah, isn't she like, winning? It was a really good final performance, given all of the, given all of, like the sound issues that her first semi performance had. Mm-hmm. Like it really came together, and like she had like a really great karaoke round. And like the thing I liked about the karaoke round this time is they were very specific, and they all did Eurovision covers. I think she had. Probably well, she and uh, Shemen Badi had probably the strongest Eurovision covers. Uh, Shemen did a uh, Celine Dion song, and I saw it did a uh, fairy tale uh, Alexander Reebok song. So, but like they were just solid performances, and I saw its performance of her own song, uh, Common Grande, was definitely the most improved from semifinal to final. And uh, yeah, she was not rewarded for that, and it was really frustrating to, <laughs> to watch that. <laughs> so, yes. Coming out of all of the performances, the the jury again had that that kind of crazy pile up of of people. But like at the end of it all, you had Bilal down in I think fourth or fifth mm-hmm. of all of all places. Like that was what would, seemed kind of shocking to me, and just sort of watching like this stream of Facebook comments, sort of alternating between what the heck is going on mm-hmm. and seeming to be really really like that that song seemed to be bombing. Mm-hmm. But then you had Shemaine, who was at who was like in third, I think. Yeah, there were only uh, six had, points separating them. Yeah, there, yeah, like these were very, very close. You had Simone sort of having a well-defined lead, but only by probably, I think, 20 points. Mm-hmm. And, and again, like I think this is why separating out the televote points is always so exciting, is that things got shook up like a lot. Yeah, it came down to Bilal and Shemen, and there were about 200-some points still up for grabs. And be like, oh, is Shemen gonna pull an upset? That would be amazing. Like I, I, I was like watching through my fingers, just being like, "Oh, I can't believe this could actually be happening." Uh, and then the results came in, and Bilal got 150 points, and Simone, who finished in second, had 156 points total. Total. So <laughs> it was just like, oh, Bilal only needed a juror vote and the public vote to win this whole thing. So. Yeah, and like after that happened, like I went back because I was like, the numbers are the numbers on that were crazy. So I like did tabulation just to just to check and no, they had the exact same kitty of points to distribute, and the public was like, nope, Bilal. I'll be curious to see how that carries over to Eurovision. Granted, there's a lot of time to like make tweaks and yeah, and like let, let's talk about the song for a moment. Yes, yeah. So what are your thoughts on the song? The the two ponies that that had like the best chance in this race were were Bilal and were and Simone just sort of those were the leaders coming out of their semifinals mm-hmm. I thought Simone's song was lovely but I also thought it felt very France mm-hmm. and I I didn't feel strongly about its chances in sort of a larger field it, it felt like the sort of thing that France would send and then complain when they came in like the bottom five mm-hmm. whereas wa has like a feeling of modernness to it or it feels like it feels in step with contemporary music yes I think given the the dare to dream theme, like it, it sort of locks in with that very nicely. I think that they, they still have some work to do on the actual performance, but they have plenty of time. So the first performance I thought was kind of standard. It feels like everybody this year is like emerging from the crowd and like you got like they can't we can't have like 27 acts like all coming out of the crowd in in Tel Aviv. But for the second performance, they kind of they updated the wardrobe. They updated it felt like they kind of like gotten halfway done with updating the staging, but it was time for the, for the show to start. Wait, did they update the wardrobe? Because that looked like an '80s power suit that Bilal was they wearing. Different. They picked. They went from a white '80s power suit to a black '80s power suit. It's completely different. Mm. I did appreciate your climax reference on Twitter, though. Thank you. Because there was definitely a meeting in the ladies' room. Yeah. It felt like they're still kind of working out elements, and they've got, like, it feels like they have all of the raw material there, because I liked that they started to incorporate a bunch of the video footage from the lyric video for this, because mm-hmm. I thought that that was, that was, like, a very endearing thing to me when I was watching the lyric video for the song. It gave it, like, a sense of story. It gave it a sense of person. It, it, it made it feel very personal. I didn't really care for the first semifinal performance just because I thought that there were so many elements on stage and none of them were really yes. cohesive. And it's like, all right, you've, you've got some bones here, but need to do a little bit of editing. And then this final performance, I like the idea of having it 
have a more personal touch, but again, I didn't find it to be all that cohesive. And I was just also so distracted by the power suit and the bedazzled whatever thing was going on with the shoulders. Like it was it was just yeah. uh I got into a couple arguments about the fashion choice <laughs> on, um, on Twitter. Yeah, like, but I like the idea of the videos. I'm not sure I like the large infomercial TV like on the stage mm-hmm. with the with the videos. I liked when the dancers came in, although I thought that they needed to be there from the like the first chorus. But but again, they, they have a lot of elements going on and they're still in the process of editing them, I think. Yeah. And when Bilal was doing uh his victory performance of the song and like just hugging people on stage and just kind of going through the motions of singing it i thought that was actually the best performance of the song and i think part of yeah like the vocals were great yeah because i think a lot of it was just like oh there's no pressure right now don't have to worry about choreography and it's just like being in the moment and i would love it if the song kind of embraces that yeah, is is figure out okay, me like the vocal is so much stronger when he's not also trying to do like twelve different steps of choreography. So maybe start with that as a starting point and figure out how to build around it. I'm not as enthusiastic about this one as I was about last week's entries. I think I think my enthusiasm high is starting to wane a little bit, but Okay. I don't hate this entry. It's just it needs some work. Yeah, it needs work. The thing for me is like it's been a grower because it mm-hmm. wasn't necessarily my favorite coming out of the first semifinal, but for this one, it was definitely my favorite. It feels like it can have legs and some longevity given that we are in January and Eurovision is not until May. The whole field overall, I don't think there was a dud in the mix. Like, yeah, I like, mean, there was there were some, some that were more French than others. You had some but entries that were very French. I really enjoyed the show. I thought they, yeah, as a show, France did a really good job. Well, yeah, and I feel like they really learned what worked and what didn't work last year in terms of why is this six hours long and why is it like three hours of covers of the zombies where the person that's uh, the potential winner is a backing singer. Right, yeah. Speaking of whether or not the process got it right, Czech Republic has made their selection for Eurovision and they have gone with Lake Malawi's Friend of a Friend. which breaks my heart but (laughs) yeah it it does and like you can just sort of see my reaction to the news slowly coming out in our notes and in real time where i'm just like okay so the juries had had made a choice but you know what the televoters still have time to get their stuff in so come on televoters just pick not this one and today that turned into you guys had one job when the jury votes were starting to come in, uh, they were announcing two different jurors' votes each day. And they were juries made up of former Eurovision contestants from the last couple of years. And Barbara Machawa, uh, her true colors, s- started getting the early sets of 12 points. And then Lake Malawi got the 12 from Malta. Uh, and then they were kind of like going back and forth. And yeah, Lake Malawi ended up winning five out of the 10 international juror votes. And then I guess there was like the overall international jury where it was just like all the other countries that weren't the 10 specifically uh, noted. And yeah, Barbara Machawa ended up tying. Uh, They each got five sets of 12 points. The points process here felt a little bit more confusing to me just because they did like all online. Mm -hmm. Just looking at the numbers. Yeah, like they came out of like the the jury voting sort of neck and neck. And then the the televoting came out and just did all sorts of things, didn't it? Yeah. I mean, I guess I'm not surprised. Well, I'm not surprised. I'm just disappointed. Yes, exactly. Yeah, looking at the chart on Wikipedia, Space Sushi ended up winning the televote. I knew in my heart of hearts when I when I when we talked about it last week. I'm like, the televote's going to like this one. Yeah, yeah. The jury was pretty ambivalent about it. They only got uh, <laughs> yeah. The jury that kind of had that written all over it. Like the first time I listened to it. Yeah. So, but it ended up finishing second place overall. I was like, oh, okay. And then Pam Rabbit's Easy to Believe finished third. Barbara down fourth. That really surprised me. Maybe they're not super into Lana Del Rey over in, in the Czech Republic. I mean, the thing that, that surprised me is that apparently Lake Malawi's name is at least some sort of homage or reference to uh, Bon Iver. Oh, really? Which I, I, I love, and I, and I particularly like what they did in their last album. And also, like, how dare you bring Bon Iver into this Lake Malawi? How dare you, you sully justin vernon's wisconsin name in this house <laughs> i have strong indie rock thoughts uh, yeah, and apparently yeah so <laughs> I'm, I'm, and i'm just trying to like mentally put them into the same box and just my brain's not allowing that so 
Anyways, the Czech Republic did a great job last year, and I'm not sure how they did this year. Again, with being such an early selection, there's a lot of work to be done. And it'll it'll be, I think a lot's also going to depend on how much travel they put in, because that, that was, yeah. I think that made a big difference for Czech Republic last year. He, yeah, like he, Miklas was everywhere, was like at all the things. He put in the work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I mean, if if Lake Malawi ends up putting in just as much work, I mean, good part, on them. Of, so, part of me yeah. is just finding it very, very hilarious that last week we had a discussion going, how are they going to stage this? And now, you know, the, the monkey's paw has like curled a finger and now we get to find out. Michaela. The other selection that happened over the weekend, uh, Malta's X Factor uh, wrapped up its first season, and Michaela Pace was the winner. Did you get a chance to really watch any of the X Factor while it was on? In Malta, I did not, but I did watch her cover of Shallow from A Star Is Born, and it's very good. I am fully ready for that to be like a karaoke standard and like a X Factor slash Country's Got Talent slash mm-hmm. Idol standard for the next couple of years because it's it's a good vocal showcase. Although the only thing I was disappointed is that they did not give her like the full minute of like that weird kind of wailing bridge. Yeah. That like we made so many memes of on the Twitter. Mm-hmm. The trailer came out and like that's all we like cut everything to that. So you let her perform the whole thing instead of like a weird cut down version. Especially because like that is a technically challenging sound to accomplish. And if you can do it, show that off. So we don't know yet how Malta is going to choose their song. If they have songs in the bank, if they're still waiting for somebody to write a song yeah i think they're doing like an internal thing with the song like that's just artists yeah yeah so this is all kind of tbd in terms of when we'll hear the song if the song even exists so congratulations michaela great choice malta yeah yeah i'm i'm my enthusiasm starting to build up again so yeah (laughs) okay it's time for everybody's favorite segment on the program how many people are left in lithuania's selection process all right so this past weekend was heat three which means that we have 18 acts that have moved on to the semifinals. There's okay. still Heat 4. There were 12 people scheduled to be in Heat 4. Only 11 showed up for the taping. So <laughs> there are either 29 oh, or 30 acts still in competition. It's too many, Lithuania. Yeah, especially because they've been at it for close to a month now. Like They started at the beginning of January. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We are almost into yeah, you've February. Been, you've been so. doing this for a month and you still have 30 people. Well, actually, sorry, 29 people or 30 people. Mm-hmm. Lithuania, you are a nation of 2.8 million people. Yeah. Hungary started their show, not this past weekend, the weekend before. They started with 30 acts. They are, they've already cut a third of that. Like they're, they're 12 in the semifinal and then like one more set of 10 to go. Like they know how to move things along. Uh, mm-hmm. But. Lithuania, why can't you be like your sibling hungry? They're the good one. Yeah. So anyway, the reason why uh, there's uh, yeah, some... <laughs> yeah, yeah, let, yeah, let's rewind to, wait a minute, somebody didn't show up for taping? Yeah. So uh, Sasha Song, who represented uh, Lithuania in 2009, did not show up for the taping. They film the heats in advance, get the jury scores, and then when they air it live, people can call in, and then they end up doing the results just as like a graphic on the screen like there is there are no contestant reactions to whether or not they advance he blamed the song producer for just not creating a usable entry for the contest okay. yeah okay. like it was okay. just like there were like too many like electronic uh since all vocals need to be live at eurovision there were just too many like electronic voices that were happening in the song and I, I guess he just would cite artistic differences as, as, okay. as the reason. You could also do that before submitting the number. True. And I think that may be the Lithuanian broadcaster's stance on that because they're still finding him 2,000 euro for no calling, no showing, <laughs> which is a level of petty that I appreciate. Okay, okay, that just feels delightfully petty, and I'm, I, I fully approve. Uh, yeah. So Heat 4, 
should be the last qualifying heat. And then we get into the mystery that is the semifinals. And they're supposed to be done in like mid-February, I think. Like they're not okay. supposed to go until the end of March. But with the way this is playing out, they're going to be done probably sometime in July. So, yep. uh, But, you know, Lithuania, their process does work. So, I mean, they've, they've been pretty successful the last few years. So what is this? The Sixers? Trust the process. I get that reference. Uh, <laughs> I don't understand basketball, but I do listen to Reply All, mm-hmm. so I now know how these things work. What is on the docket for this weekend? So many things. Again, we keep getting into the deep end of the pool, mm-hmm. I guess. Just so many so many entries. Like we had, like Iceland dropped its artists last week. I still have to listen to those. Estonia has just like a bunch of artists that I will hear at some point. Yeah, Estonia's semifinals will be starting this week. Uh, th- yeah, they're doing a kind of interesting process. They'll have uh, their first semifinal on Thursday, their second semifinal on Saturday, and then their finals not for a couple more weeks. Pretty sizable gap between the two, but uh, almost all of the songs are available on Spotify. We have them in our master playlist. Uh, we'll throw together a Estonia specific playlist that you can listen to. And th- this year's crop is pretty good. So Austria and Finland are announcing their artists sometime between when we record this and when we drop this. Norway dropped all of their artists. And I really need to give everything a second listen there. Mm hmm. Uh, some great visuals, artist-wise, though. Just very excited on the visuals. Looking forward to seeing if the if the audios uh, match up with that. Yes. Uh, Denmark songs drop, and like Denmark is one of the ones I'm always interested by. More than once, I have found some delightful pop gem uh, that didn't quite make it, like in in their usual like ten to twelve songs. Mm-hmm. Denmark songs will be dropping on Thursday, and then also dropping this week is Netta's follow up single. Yeah, b- believe it or not, she hasn't followed up Toy yet, so. A lot of mystery as to what that is going to involve. She did post like a preview video on her Instagram earlier where the video is like a giant Netta head that like rises from the ground and then a car comes out of a garage that, that like where her mouth would be. It's very strange. Okay, so. so that feels like it's ripping off like a very specific Grace Jones for like Chevrolet commercial. Oh, I would love that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll send I'll send you a link because like I've not seen the Instagram video, but just with that terrifying description, I'm like, that's a very specific visual reference. Also, every time I hear about someone's single dropping, I think about the the Thirty Rock <laughs> episode where, where Tracy Jordan's wife mm. talks about how her single, my single, is dropping, is dropping. <laughs> um, and then so Melfest approaches very quickly. That that is kicking off maybe this weekend. Yeah, I, I forget. Yeah, oh dang. yeah, this I Saturday. To, like, uh, Need to book some quality time to watch uh, semifinal one there. This coming weekend, it's probably going to be the last quiet-ish weekend yeah, that we quiet, have. Yeah, yeah, because uh, we are hitting the bulk of Eurovision season. All of the things are happening. So many things. February sixteenth. I've run out of spots on my Google Calendar, even on like the single day listing, because there are too many things that are happening that day. So something to look forward to, everybody. <laughs> yep, we're going to have to divide and conquer over here at the news desk. All right, that's going to do it for this episode of the Euro What. Thank you for listening. Your What podcast is hosted by Mike McComb, that's me, and Ben Smith. That's me. You can find us on our website at EuroWhat.com and on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at EuroWhat. If you'd like to contact us by email, we can be reached at esc at whatelseison.tv. We'd love to hear your questions and comments. You can subscribe to the Euro What on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or the podcast app of your choice. Rating and reviewing the podcast when you subscribe also helps other Eurovision fans find us. Word of mouth is still the best way to get folks to listen, so please be sure to tell your friends about the Euro What podcast. We'll be back next week to try to make sense of what's new in Eurovision. 